It's DeFi and coins you might want to research here on Investors Hub Market Vision. We're talking with ADVFN's CEO Clem Chambers about his favorite topic, DeFi. And uh, he's going to share with us some coins he's been paying attention to, and maybe you want to pay attention to them too. So what are three DeFi coins we should be watching and why? Interesting question. Every day it's a different answer for me. There's so much exploding out at the moment. It's just, you know, beggar's belief. So before you called me, I actually bought a coin called Injective, which is a fascinating coin. It's an exchange, but no one's ever heard of it. <laughs> they might hear about it going forward. And earlier on um, this morning, I was buying a coin called um, Rarible, which is an NFT token, non-fungible token, which is a fabulous site, absolutely fabulous site. I sent all my friends a non-fungible token of a packet of cyber chips, and it, it cost me six bucks to do so. And they're lovely art artworks, and it's a, it's a whole thing that's coming. And at the moment, it's just art being on um, non-fungible tokens, but shortly it will be things like house deeds and car, um, cars and you name it. All sorts of things will be tied up with these NFTs. It's going to be massive. <clears throat> so I bought the token because the company is like one of two or three, and it's certainly at the very forefront of that particular area. But it's going to be a juggernaut, maybe not next year, but the year after. DeFi is going to be a juggernaut. And for that, the classics are um, Uniswap. Uniswap is just, you know, a fabulous site. I'm using it every day. In fact, I checked out how much of transactions that I'd spent, which is more than it's easy to do with your broker sometimes. I spent $1,800 on Ethereum gas doing these various um, trades. This is, you know, reasonable amount of money, nice bottle of wine, that. But Uniswap is the leader in that field. So that's a must-have. Then there's uh, SushiSwap, which is kind of like the, the competitor uh, for these, it's a DEX, which is a, a decentralized exchange. And SushiSwap, again, it's an amazing piece of tech, um, gives fabulous um, returns on the liquidity you give to it. Because these exchanges, you can actually be the market maker. So you, you take the token you like or don't like, or a token you think is exciting, and you take some Ethereum, the equal value of it, and you put it into a liquidity pool, and you then act like a market maker with everybody else. And these exchanges automatically, and there's no human intervention, take 0.3% on the trade, so 30 base, basis points, going fees. Now the liquidity providers get 20 basis points, so get 0.2 of a percent of say the $50,000 that just got transacted. So you can be the market maker in the same way as you can't with equities. And that mounts up. I've got another token called Kipo, which is a project of a young genius, and that's paying like 60% um, interest a year on those fees. So if you took the last few days of fees and you multiply that out over 365 days, you'd be getting 65%. So if you then take that liquidity and give it to someone like SushiSwap, and they will say, well, have some free SushiSwap coins for giving us the liquidity, like the exchange would, the NASDAQ will pay market makers to make the market and it will pay you to give the liquidity. Well, now it's 90%. And you might go, 90% interest, that's ridiculous. That's Bernie Madoff territory. Well, it is Bernie Madoff territory because he was a market maker and market makers make huge returns on their capitals, absolutely massive returns on their capital. It's not the same as lodging it with a bank and there's risks and it's complicated and it's difficult and you melt your brain trying to do it. So there's a number of tokens I just mentioned. One I particularly like, which is as risky as, as, as you can believe. And when you actually look into this thing, you go, this is amazing. I don't believe it. It's incredible. But because it's all on the blockchain, can actually check it so if you go to old bernie madoff and you say look after my money how are you doing with this stuff and say oh i'm doing one percent a month for the last 25 years you can't check that but you can check it on ethereum if a coin is paying out so much if a coin is um doing what it says it's doing with every single transaction and paying out a small fee you can check how much they made in the last month and for example a, a site called called harvest which i have a token called farm which i love has made $2 million in the last six weeks in fees, of which is paid out two thirds to people who own the token and lodge it with them. And you can check that on Ethereum if you're you know, a good enough programmer. So it's not like, like they can be lying unlike any Ponzi scheme guy that you ever meet. It's a fact. And you can pull your coins like that instantaneously. You don't have to wait. You don't have to write a little letter, dear Mr. Ponzi scheme, please send me my money. You can just go take it out, put it on Uniswap, sell it, 
send it to your Coinbase or your wallet. So it's almost unbelievable that these things are paying those yields and have that kind of upside. But when you realize what they're actually doing is they're doing what um, the NICE is doing, but without the building and without the computers and without the CEO making $100 million a year and without loads of people wobbling about trying to be important, that's not there. All those overheads are gone. So all that money that a NICE makes can go to the people that own the stock or in this case, the liquidity or their tokens. All those market makers that are creaming you as you trade on your it's free to trade on its gov um, style sites. And, you know, you know, Sherwood Forest and all those guys, um, <clears throat> all that goes away, too. And on top of that, not only does the stock exchange overheads go away, the market makers um, overheads go away. All their computing equipment go, overheads go away and even the broker overheads go away. So the people that stake the liquidity and own the token can get all that. Well, that's a lot of money, and that's a big margin. Because when you look at something like the NICE, their, their, their margin, their net profit is going to be, luckily, if it's 20%. Most companies, it's 5%. So you imagine you have a company where you have no overheads and just a business that draws in good fees. Well, those margins are huge. And by owning the token, you'll become basically a shareholder. Now, that's where DeFi has gone. And that's where all this crypto stuff is going. And that's why these returns are so amazing. What will actually happen is um, the institutions will get in and the mainstream will get in and they will just bid up the tokens to a price where they come into line with interest rates, which will get in a bank. So maybe they'll go, oh, this is a bit spicy and a bit rich. Um, 6% is more than enough for me. Thank you very much. So if you're getting 36% now, your token will go up sixfold. Well, you know, that's quite an interesting prospect. So that's why I'm so excited about this area. <clears throat> if you couldn't check it on the blockchain, I wouldn't be interested at all because it'd definitely not be a thing. It would definitely be a fraud. It would definitely be a fake. It would definitely be a Ponzi. But because you can check it, there's complete transparency or as near as you need, you can check this stuff. It opens up a whole whole dimension um, of possibilities. So it's a very, very exciting area. And basically, it's going to be a huge boom next year. And over the next few years, it's just going to be massive. It's going to turn the finance industry upside down. Because DeFi, they're doing things like insurance companies, um, brokerage, um, ex um, stock exchanges, you name it, they're all doing it. And the beauty is, apart from the code that's building this stuff, and apart from several downsides of like security, there's not anybody in the loop. There's no middleman. There's no call center. There's no um, CEO and his assistants and senior vice presidents and vice presidents and directors and managers and managers assistants and frontline staff. That's, none of that's there. So if you think about a Citibank or a Wells Fargo, when all there was was a piece of software doing everything and everybody had it on their computer already, how much would Wells Fargo make if it didn't have offices? You know, there's 25,000 bank branches in the world, or is it 200,000? It's just an immense amount of bank branches, bricks and mortar, CO2 gushing, people stuffed. Bank branches. Well, you know, DeFi does away with all, all that if you want it to, if they let it. And really, there's no option. They will have to let it. It's just a matter of when, not if. Thanks for watching. Be sure to like, comment, and subscribe, and I'll see you again soon.